We are together. We are the Word of Faith Ministry. Just thought it might be good to start. You just tinkle like a pack. We have uh, in front of us the offering bag and we're going to pray. Uh, my name is Reverend Brian Richards. This is my son, Dave, uh, Joshua Richards. Uh, Joshua Brian Richards. And he is going to pray over the offering bag. We take up an offering today, and we're going to pray the blessings of God. My my name is Reverend Brian Richards, and we represent the Word of Faith Ministries International in Australia. And uh, we're taking up an offering specifically for um, a ministry that is in the Philippines, specifically for the prisoners that we visited. Um, over there that are sleeping on concrete floors we want to give them something to sleep on and a bible as well so we've already blessed them with 400 bibles and uh, bedding to sleep on and uh, there they have to be paid for so we take up an offering each week and we pay as we go so heavenly father we thank you lord for the uh, the small amount that we have here we've been multiplied just like the bread and the fish, we pray, Lord, that uh, you would put your blessing upon what we have here. Multiply it, and so we can uh, bless many people overseas in Philippines and bless people here in Australia also. We know, Lord, that uh, you've mentioned the prisoners in your word, that we are not to forget the prisoners. So uh, we're not forgetting them we want to do more for them we ask you father god to multiply what we have so we can do more for them and uh joshua's going to pray too what would you, would you what you, would you like to pray i'm going to extend your faith on the air and pray what would you like to say i pray that um this money will be multiplied like dad said and um this money will be um will make um make more gifts for the So you, you take that and put that on the table. Are you, we, like uh, Joshua just said, we have, we have a charity to bring that to, uh, so you can read. Joshua's going to read some scriptures that we're going to uh, preach on today. And uh, I just will remind uh, those people who do uh, watch us each week that we have Bell Perezin, the Lord of the Breakthrough. Uh, You need to stand on it. Okay. We have Bell Perez and the Lord of Breakthrough, and you can see this on RevBrianRichards.com. You see all, all, all the books that we have. Also, with this uh, book, we also have a disc to go with it. Bell Perez and the Lord of the Breakthrough. If you send us a love gift, I will send this to you, the hard copy uh, and the disc, um, for, for any love gift for... Uh, uh, that will cover the postage. Maybe $20 would be enough uh, to post anywhere in the world. And uh, But if you want to purchase uh, electronic download, you can buy it by electronic download on uh, RevBrianRichards.com. Uh, RevBrianRichards.com. And here's my latest book, uh, which is uh, We Live in Prophecy Every Day, An Iron Shop of Iron. You can see that there. Uh, beautiful cover. And you'll see that on RevBrianRichards.com. And I appreciate those people that put their name on the mailing list. You can stand on that box now, son. This is Joshua, my son. And uh, those people that are on the mailing list uh, will receive uh, free from us every month uh, uh, videos and also um, our latest um uh, our latest plans of what we're doing in, in ministry. So you get to know all about us, and uh, that's, that's the reason the reason why we get, you get to know about us. 
is because we want you to pray for us. We covet your prayers, and uh, we, we uh, if you send us a love gift to help us, we appreciate that too. Okay, so here's Joshua. He's nine years old, and you've got some scriptures for us today. Okay, I'm just going to get them. Yes. I knew he wasn't ready. <laughs> okay, so he's going to get the scriptures that we're going to use today. Um, and uh, so as I do this, and as Joshua does this, he exercises his gifting in his life, and also he becomes a better reader, and one day he's going to become a better preacher. Let's hope one day he'll take over from me, and he will be the... Uh, the leader of a youth. That would be a wonderful thing, wouldn't it? Okay, we're going to we we're going to uh, continue our studies uh, on what is the, the prophet, the life of a prophet, and so we are at week three or week four. I think week four. So we call this week four, and you can see us on the internet on YouTube. Uh, the the life of a prophet, uh, and we got week one, week two, week three, and I think this is week four, and uh, we is such a big subject because we're covering all the gifts of the spirit, uh, but specifically the life of a prophet because we are learning that right with you, and it's, so this is uh, fresh anointing. It is. Uh, teaching that we're receiving from the Spirit and we're teaching you as we're receiving it. Uh, that is called revelation knowledge or <clears throat> hypnosis, which is um, revealed knowledge from God. Okay, so we're going to uh, we, we, we've been sharing the scriptures in, in, over the past of uh, how the gifts of the Holy Spirit work by love. And so in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, we see the motivational gifts. And in 1 Corinthians uh, 14, we see the ascension gifts. And all the gifts are mentioned in between, of course. But it all works by love. So in 1 Corinthians 13, which is the love chapter, we are specifically going to zone in on one particular scripture, which is uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Okay, and uh, we can get Joshua to read from there, and then you read a couple of other scriptures, and then we'll expound on that. Thank you, Joshua. So, um, I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, in um, four, four um, things, four, four kinds of verses, okay. Four interpretations of the one. Yeah, interpretations. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known, and now abide is faith, hope, and charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity, living by them. Um, in the same way, we can see and understand only a little about God now, as if we were peering at his reflection in a poor mirror, but someday we are going to see him in his completeness, face to face. Now all that I know is hazy and blurred, but then I will see everything clearly, just as clearly as God sees it to my heart right now. These are the three things that remain, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Today's English version, what we see now is like the dim image in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face what I know is only partial. Then it will com be complete, as complete as God's knowledge of me. Meanwhile, these three remain, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. New International Version. <clears throat> now we see face, now we see but a poor reflection, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part that I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. 
And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Now I am going to read Acts chapter 13, 8 to 16, in King James Version. But, but they were opposed by the Magican Elimus, this is his name in Greek. He tried to turn the governor away from the faith, then Saul, also known as Paul, was filled with the Holy Spirit. He looked straight at the magician and said, You are a son of the, the devil. You are the enemy of everything that is good. You are full of all kinds of evil tricks, and you always keep trying to turn the Lord's truths into lies. The Lord's hand will come down on you now. You will be blind, and you will not see the light of day for a time. At once, Elimus felt a black mist cover, up, cover his eyes, and he walked around trying to find someone to lead him by the hand. The governor believed when he saw what had happened. He was greatly amazed at the teaching about the Lord. And last one is um, Acts chapter 19, 1 to 6. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Crete, Paul, having passed through upper coast, came to Ephesians, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John fairly baptized with the baptism of rep rep repentance, <laughs> repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with new tongues and prophesied. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Very good. Sir, that was a lot of reading for, um, for Joshua. But um, he is the Holy Spirit and the gift that is a gifting that is on my life, how it works. Um, in particular, the 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 13, we know that that's the, the whole uh, chapter is talked about love and how the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit work by love. And if we don't have love, then we like a, um, we like a clanging, uh, what does it say, uh, through... Though we speak of tongues of men and angels, and we have not love, then we become like a sounding brass or a clinging cymbal. You're just making a noise that's not going to mean anything at all. So the gifting is there, but unless you're working love in, in your life and working love through your life, that gift is only going to be like a sounding uh, sounding brass and a tingling cymbal it just sounds like something but it's not real and uh, lots of times I've heard people uh, talk uh, the talk but not really walking the walk uh, meaning that uh, they're sounding good but they're not really doing the the work that they're, they're preaching about so <clears throat> we learn to live by faith, we learn how to walk in love and to have love and compassion on, on others. And then the gifting that is on our life will automatically work. We don't have to uh, conjure something up. We don't have to um, uh, make it work. Uh, by faith, it'll, it'll just it'll work automatically as you work the love walk. Uh, I hope that is understood. Okay, so 
in verse 14, it goes on to say, follow after love. It goes, it continues with the love. Follow after love, or follow after charity, which is love, and desire, say desire. Desire. And desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. So, in other words, it's okay for you to desire and to covet even other people's gift. If you see a gifting, a spiritual gift I'm talking about, spiritual gift that is on a person's life, it's all right for you to say, I desire that gift. I desire to, to manifest that gift in my life, you know. And so we read the scripture, Joshua read the scripture about was it Simon? Simon? What was his name? Paul. No, 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 the magician. Uh, oh, ben, Lemus. What? Lemus. Lemus. And Lemus was a magician that he seen the gift working on uh, Peter's life and he coveted it. Or he seen the gift operating on another man's life and he coveted that too. However, his heart was not right. He wasn't coveting it because he, 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 he loved God. He wasn't coveting that gift so he could be a blessing to other people. He was coveting that gift like a, a musician says, oh, I'll just add one more trick to my resume. And uh, so that's why Peter said you are like, you got a heart like a devil there and uh, it's in, in the wrong motive. So we have to do things in the right motive and therefore in, in chapter 12 we talk about the motivational part of it, motivational gifts, and then he goes on to talk about the spiritual gifts and goes on to talk about the ascension gifts, which is the fivefold ministry gifts. The fivefold ministry gift, you look at your hand and you say, okay, the thumb is the apostle that holds everything together, okay? And the pointer, when you point and you judge with that one, you know, point. And uh, so the pointer is the, the prophet, and the one that stretches the furthest is the evangelist. He'll do anything to get somebody saved, you know. And uh, the other one that is um, the marriage finger with the ring on is the pastor who is married to the church, and the other one is the teacher. And of course, what holds it together is the thumb, is the apostle that will hold it all together. Okay, so the fivefold ministry gifting is just like that, held together with the thumb, which is the apostle. So the apostle is the ascent one, usually the sent sent one to start the thing off. You know. However, we see through scripture that the apostles and the prophets give revelation knowledge, say revelation knowledge. Revelation, revelation knowledge. knowledge means revealed knowledge from God to the rest of the body of Christ. So when we're talking about the fivefold ministry gift, the apostle and the prophet are the, the most important ones because they come with the revelation knowledge that the other ones teach like the evangelists or the pastor and teacher, they teach revelation knowledge that is given by the apostles and prophets. So the apostles and prophets, <clears throat> uh, most people in the body of Christ today, most teachers in the body of Christ today, would say that the apostles and prophets are no more, and particularly the apostles. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it actually tells us in Revelation, don't call yourself an apostle, because, uh, you know, there are many false apostles that have gone out before us. And uh, there are many that will come after us. So, the revelation knowledge that we've got already to the body of Christ does not need to be added to or taken away. And it actually says that if you add to or take away from what has been given, it's, it's like, well, it is. It's bringing a curse upon yourself because God is not happy with that. And it's like, not that God will curse you, 
And but it's like you step out of the umbrella of protection that we have. If it was raining today, your mother would say, take our umbrella to keep yourself. And if you're going to step out without the umbrella, you're going to get wet. It's exactly the same with the blessing of God and with the protection of God is under the fivefold ministry gifting. And if you're going to step out from that, you're going to get rained on. You're going to get a curse, as it were. And so <clears throat> the, the, the covering that we have, that's all right, the covering that we have is under the anointing and under the protection of the revelation knowledge that we already have. And so the church as a whole, as we know it, around the world, would say that because of what I've already said, the revelation knowledge has already been given, we just need to add it to or take away from, and therefore we, there is no more. But that's not true. I've found that I've been to uh, three different ministries, uh, two different Bible colleges, and uh, many training procedures um, through different organizations. So I've belonged to three or four different organizations over the last 20 years or more, and um, um, I have found that there is revelation knowledge to be found. Um, and God reveals more as we uh, open our heart to receive. However, it is not doctrinal. You know, doctrinal meaning the, the basic doctrinal teaching that we have is not added to and it's not taken away. However, the ways of God, you know, first we learn the Word of God. Then we learn the ways of God. Now, so what I'm going to teach you now is not necessarily a new doctrine, but it is maybe a ways of God that you never <clears throat> Uh, that you never considered that this is the way God does things. And yet, I believe the Old Testament and the New Testament, this is the way God does things. And certainly in my life, that I have a gift, and some people would say it's a pro pro prophet gift, I would prefer to say that it's a prophetic anointing and that if you have, if you are prophetically motivated that way, then you can develop the gift also. The, the demonstration and uh, what I'm going to share with you is can be cultivated. That's what I'm trying to say. That the gifting can be cultivated if you are motivated in the prophetic anointing. I hope that's understandable. Is that understandable? I hope that's understandable to those people who are viewing. If you're viewing this teaching, this is week four of the teaching of uh, the life of a prophet. But specifically, the, the gifting and the motivational gifts and the ascension gifts uh, and uh, the life of a, of, a, of a prophet. Okay, so <clears throat> we pick it up once again because people may have just got this uh, week four without the other weeks. I have to pick it up again where it says uh, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 29 are all apostles now are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret? Of course, the answer would be no, not all, but we all can. Uh, but 
It's not for everyone, in other words. But this is for everyone, that you should covet, in verse 31, but covet earnestly the best gift, and yet I show you a more excellent way. So there is a desiring and a coveting going on now, that I want that gift. I, want to des I desire very much to move into that gift. And that's quite all right, acceptable in God's eyes. So, chapter 13 says, Though I speak in tongues of men and angels, and I, um, and I have not love or charity, I am becoming a sounding brass, a tingling symbol. So, in other words, if you're going to enter into this without the love of God, you're wasting your time. Okay. So I just skip through now that whole chapter right up to the end where it says in verse 12, it says, For now I see through glass darkly. It, this is the Apostle Paul talking, saying that now I see through glass darkly. He means that he does see, though the glass is dark, he still can see something through it so let's let's do an analogy of this and just say right down the middle here is the glass that is dark glass just like a tinted window of a motor car or a tinted window of a shop front you know to stop the sun you can go up to that glass even though it's hard to look through at a distance if you get up close, you can look through that glass and see what's on the other side. So is the ways of the Spirit and the things of God. And that is saying that, well, now I see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, for I know in part, but then shall I eat now, uh, know, even as I also am now. Meaning that, He's talking about Jesus, you're going to know you know Jesus now in part, but you're going to know in the fullness when he comes. But also are the ways of the Spirit that in the natural sense you can't see. But in the spiritual sense, if you stand in the Spirit, you can see everything, right? So if you're looking through the glass darkly, you, you can see some, but if you enter into that Spirit, you can see all. Now, this is the way of the Spirit. And now, verse 13, And now abide us faith, hope, and love, and these three, but the greatest of these is love. In other words, if you walk, perfect your love walk, you'll perfect your spirit walk, you know, and you'll walk in the Spirit, and you'll know more of the things of the Spirit that you'll be able to teach others. And he's saying that I desire for you to have these spiritual gifts, but rather, I would rather that you have prophecy. See? Follow after love and desire spiritual gifts, but I'd rather that you may prophesy. Why is that? It's because if you can prophesy, then you can edify somebody else. You can edify a whole church full of people, or you can edify one individual at a time, whichever way the Lord leads you, okay? And that's why he goes on to say, it's, uh, for he that speaketh in unknown tongue, verse 2, this is 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 2, he says, for he that speaketh in unknown tongue speaks not unto men but unto God. For no man understandeth him, how be it he speaks mysteries. So why do it in the first place, in other words? Why speak in other tongues that nobody can understand, even yourself, but you speak mysteries? Why do it then? It goes on to say, But he that prophesies speaks unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. He's directing the the uh, the prophecy now. And he's saying that it's a prophecy-motivated person, the person who wants to edify somebody else, edify the church, 
And all your words are going to come for edification, exhortation, a comfort. If it's neither one of those, it's not prophecy motivated. Okay. Uh, verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. This is the reason why we do it. We speak in tongues to edify ourselves. What part of us becomes edified is our mind. Because why we can't edify our spirit any more than the Holy Spirit does. We can't edify our body unless we eat food. But the soul, which is the mind, the will, and the emotions, are edified now as we speak in tongues. The mind, which is the, the soul part, you know, the soul, which is the mind, the will, and the emotions, become edified to know the will of God so you can speak the will of God out to the individual or to a church and edify other people. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. that, sounds, that sounds right. Okay. So how, now we go back to verse 13, or verse 12, sorry. Go back to verse 12, and see 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 12. I want to emphasize on that word darkly is because not only does it mean a dark glass. In my Bible, which is the King James uh, Version, in my Bible, on the word darkly, it's got a number four. And as you find out what that number four means, it means a riddle or a puzzle. Okay? Now, if you've got an amplified Bible, you'll say something different to darkly. But that word, darkly, would say a riddle or a puzzle. Now, what do you do with a riddle? And what do you do with a puzzle? You put it together, don't you? A puzzle, you put together, all the little jigsaw puzzles, put all that together until you get the picture. With a riddle, you work it out until you get the meaning. Okay? So it's a riddle or a puzzle. This is how God speaks to me in puzzles. It gives me not the whole picture, but a part of that picture. And if I press into God and say, Lord, what does this mean? I have got a picture here. What does it mean? The Lord will give me then a scripture to go with the picture, just to show me that I'm hearing correctly. So if I've got a picture and I've got a scripture to go with it, I'll just say, yes, Lord, I'm, I'm hearing right. And as I speak out, I take the step of faith and I speak out that puzzle or that sometimes it's not a full picture yet. It's just the puzzle and the scripture to go with it. Somebody will you, over there will say, yes, I've got this one. And somebody over there will say, yes, I've got this one. So as they speak all together, the picture comes together and the pastor of the church will say, Aha! This is what God is saying. Okay. So that's how the gift of oh, the life of a prophet works. It doesn't work independently to the body of Christ. It works collectively with the other giftings. Praise the Lord. I hope We've illustrated correctly this week how the gifting works uh, of a prophet. However, there are other prophets that would say God uses me in a different way. See? I'm just saying the way God uses me. But as we cultivate the gift that is on your life. I mean, there are other prophets that sing like your mother. You, you, you could sing to the body of Christ. And I've seen a prophetic anointing come through worship, come through singing. And uh, as one particular uh, woman that I know, she sings and she lays hands on people while she's singing and they just melt, their heart melt, they give their life to Jesus and whatever, you know. The God just moves through that girl in a different way, see. And so God uses the character and the nature that you are 
after you're born again, I have this illustration that I use. I say, you don't quit dancing when you come to Jesus, you just change partners. Okay? So sometimes God uses the 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 sort of person that you are for him instead of the devil. You know? So you don't quit dancing when you come to Jesus, you just change partners. And so the Apostle Paul, for instance, he was the Hebrew of Hebrews. He was the best there was. As a soldier, he was the best soldier. As a Hebrew scholar, he was the best. He was the best of everything. But he had to say in uh, 1 Galatians chapter 1, he actually says that I can, can it all dong, all that knowledge that I have, I can it all dong in compared to knowing Jesus. He had to lay it aside and at the right time, God told him then he could pick it up and run with it. And of course, he, he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament and, and he was a, you know, a great man of God. But he was not one of the apostles of the Lamb. So how could he come out with a statement that I know Jesus or I know the Lord better than you all? That's what he said. I know the Lord better than you all. And then he, 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 then he explained how why he said, I pray more than you all. Pray in tongues more than you all. He took the time and took the discipline that it takes on your body to pray in the Holy Ghost more than any other person at that time. And he came out with more revelation knowledge than anybody else at that time. So that speaks doesn't that speak for itself that if you want to know more of God, if you want to have more understanding of God, spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. Some people say spend time meditating in the Word. Well, it takes that as well. In Joshua 1.8, it says, Meditate in the Word day and night. It make your way prosperous and you have good success. However, Okay, now this is a big however. I've explained how the gifting works on my life. However, if your foundations are not correct, and I've said this in previous uh, recordings, if your foundations are not correct, then you have to correct your foundations before you start building a big building. Okay? And sometimes... As a, in my old life, I was a bricklayer and a builder, and uh, I found that in order to build up, you've got to tear down and repair the foundations before you can build up. You know, one part of the building may be uh, giving away in the foundations, so you have to take that part away, correct the foundations, and build it up again. So is our lives with the things of God. If our foundations are not correct, we need to get it right. And that's why I got uh, Joshua to read uh, in Acts 19. says that um, they said, we have not so much as heard there be any Holy Ghost. Yeah? We are talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Okay, and it's in Acts 19, this is about six years after the Pentecost. Six years after the Pentecost. So you can imagine the churches was all getting filled with the Holy Ghost, all talking in tongues, all moving in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And here was one of the churches of Corinth where the Apostle Paul came and it came to pass, verse 1, Acts 19, verse 1. And it came to pass that while the Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast of Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Since you've been born again, have you received the Holy Ghost? 
And they said, well, we've not so much as heard there'd be any Holy Ghost. Oh, well. So this, Paul thinking, well, how did they get born again? And how did they get baptized? Because baptism gives the promise of the Holy Ghost, right? In Acts 2, 38, it says, what do we do to be saved? Right? And he says, be, repent and be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's Acts 2, 38. So here we are at Acts 19, and the Apostle Paul said, John truly baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him that should come after him, relate to Jesus Christ. Huh? Uh, believe on him that should come after him on Christ Jesus, the anointing of Jesus. So if you want the anointing of Jesus, you have to be baptized into the anointing of Jesus. All right? And he says, so now, verse 5, he says, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Now that is clear as crystal as far as I'm concerned. So if you're not baptized in Jesus' name, and I'm talking to anyone that is looking at this video, I beg of you to listen to me now. If you're not baptized in Jesus' name, find somebody that will baptize you in Jesus' name for the remission of sins, and you too will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You too can speak in tongues. You too can move in the, in the, and covet earnestly the, the best gift for you. What is the best gift? The one you need at the time. If you need the gift of healing, if you need the gift of miracles, if you need the gift of prophecy, if you need a prophet, if you need a pastor, if you need evangelist, if you need a teacher, whatever you need, believe God for it and God will give it. It's just plain, easy and simple. And other people would tell you, no, you can't do it that way. Get out of their way and ask somebody to baptize you in Jesus' name. When you've been baptized in Jesus' name, then you can go amongst the other brethren, uh, the ones who told you you can't do it that way, and you will move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Guaranteed. Jesus said it. The Holy Spirit said it through his word. So I hope I haven't been too long-winded. I think I've taken about 43 minutes so far. So I will close with that and I will start to pray for people that I know need the prayer. One of the people that come to mind is uh, the people that we've seen in the Philippines. The people that we've seen here in Australia as well, many have uh, not understood the ways of God. They've understood the word of God over many years, but they've not understood the ways of God. And therefore, they need to come into a relationship with him, not a religion, you understand, a relationship through the correct teaching of the word. So I pray that those people that love Jesus and have not manifest the Holy Spirit, that once again they can be led to the waters of baptism and be baptized afresh in Jesus' name for the remission of sins and you too will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And there has come to mind other people that I've prayed for, for other needs, and which was um, in the form of a, a deliverance, 
And therefore, I would remind them of this scripture that I used in time past and continue to use again if I want to see somebody delivered from evil spirit or delivered from uh, a habit that they can't get rid of any other way. I've counseled people that have got some very serious uh, habits, even demonic influences, and I haven't had the answers for them. I've led them to the waters of baptism and I've allowed God to do an operation for the waters of baptism. You want to see that scripture? Here it is. In Colossians chapter 2 and verse 11. First of all, it says in verse 10 that you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. And in verse 11 it says, in whom also you are circumcision with a circumcision made without hands. In other words, there is a cutting away, a circumcision, a cutting away made without hands. In other words, God do it. A circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Christ means the anointing of Jesus. The anointed one. Okay. Verse 12. Buried with him in baptism. There it is. Buried with him in baptism wherein also you are risen with him through faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead and you being dead in your sins and the circumcision of your flesh as he quickened, quickened mean made alive together with him having forgiven all the trespasses of the past. Amen. And blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it away and nailed it to the cross. When Jesus was nailed on the cross, he took your pain, he took your sickness, he took your disease, he took your problem, whatever it is that you can't get free of, you can be free of it now because as you baptize in water, in verse 12, it says, through faith, if you put faith to work in that God will do an operation for the waters of baptism, you will be free. What man cannot do, the Holy Spirit does in the waters of baptism. He actually cuts you free from that sin, sickness and disease. And you rise up in a newness of life in Christ Jesus, totally free from the thing that has held your bondage. Can you receive that today? Heavenly Father, I pray for those in need. I pray that you reach out to my hands now and receive the anointing of deliverance in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I pray for salvation, healing and deliverance to come in Jesus' name. I bind and break the power of Satan. I bind and break the power of any negative sickness and disease. All positivity will come right now as we break the power of Satan, we break the power of bondage, all addictions will be broken right now. I speak to pain in the body, sickness in the body that is caused through demonic influences. I break the power of Satan and I cast it away, set you free in the power and the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for your spirit. I thank you, Lord, for your anointing. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost go to everyone that would hear this message today and set them free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. If you've heard this message for the first time, I'd like you to put your name on the mailing list, which is in Rev. Brian Richards. Dot com, Rev Brian Richards dot com. Put your name on the mailing list. We'll be in touch with you. Every month you receive a, little, a free gift from us in some way. And 
every month you receive the videos that if you've missed them, they'll come to you. You won't have to go searching for them, they'll come to you. Everybody on the mailing list would receive that and everybody on the mailing list will receive a free gift every month. It's something that I give away. In the meantime, if you want to look at RevBrianRiches.com, you'll see all the books. This is my latest book. It's called Prophecy Every Day and we should be walking in prophecy every day. Just like I've just ministered, you can walk in prophecy every day. You hear from God yourself. You don't need any man teach you, but the anointing of God will teach you all things, show you things to come. God bless you now. Have a great day. We'll be finishing off with worship, hallelujah. My beautiful wife is going to come and give us her word of edification and finish off with the, with the song. Thank you. Sorry. Discover the power of your thoughts and words. The key is to choose the right thoughts to keep your mind set. Not just when you feel good, not just when things are going your way, not just when you don't have any problems, but even the tough times of life, especially in the difficult times. You must keep your mind set on the good things of God. Stay focused. Stay full of faith. Stay full of joy. Stay full of hope. Make a conscious decision that you are going to stay in a positive frame of mind. Some people take one step forward and then two steps backward. They are happy and in a good attitude one day. Then the next day, they are negative and depressed. They make a little progress, then they back up because of their vacillating faith. Vacillating faith, it means they hesitate to believe. They hold back in doubt. They never really get to the place that wants, God wants them to be. They never experience the victorious He set in store for them. Friend, we must be consistent. Set your mind for success, victory, and progress. Cast down anything negative, any, any thought that brings fear, worry, doubt, or unbelief. Well, our attitude should be, I refuse to go backward. I am going forward with God. I am going to the person He wants to be. I am going to fulfill my destiny. If you, will, if you will do that, God will continually work in your life. He'll fight your battles for you. He'll give you peace in the midst of a storm. And He'll help you live the life of victory that He has in store for you.
we're just going to finish up there, and uh, before we go, we we got come on, we got uh, Joshua wants to talk about a couple of books here. And I hope, hope you've read them all. Okay. So first, um, I'm going to read um, the um, Who is a disciple? Who is a disciplined disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Reverend Brian Richards has been an ordained minister since 1948, has been used by God to plant over 100 churches. A true, um, true pioneer is a person who is the first to enter and explore or to settle a new thing. This this what he does best. However, this book is written to stop his notes from falling out of his Bible. As he always said, I shall put them into a book one day. This book has arrived and the book is an excellent tool for arrange list and student. Next is There Are Real Giants in the Land. Welcome to my new missionary report. This I was asked the other day, why don't you ministry to where presently uh, priestly garments anymore? Well, if you click onto my link below, I will give you an answer in the first video. However, I do have to support myself by some kind of work because I am not a payroll of any denomination on the internet. So follow